Hey guys, and welcome back. So Harlequin was finally added to the game, and because I'm a man of my word, let's go ahead and get some Harle Harlequin review action in. Alright, so starting off we have a uh, Fire Harlequin. Um, she is a tank type. I do love her design, by the way. It's super duper it's super duper cute. It's over the top, but it is pretty cute. But anyways, uh, the fire one is a tank type. She's coming in with nearly 41k HP, 2k attack, and then almost 1.9k defense. Stat-wise, it's a tank. Plenty of HP on her. Um, that's pretty much it. It is an at 4, so I, I was expecting it to at least break 2k, but it is what it is. And this one comes in with thirst and then attack down. Thirst 80% chance for two turns, and then the attack down is 60% chance for two turns. And I do believe she has skill books as well. Uh, definitely a PvP mon. Um, Thirst in particular isn't anything amazing. It definitely can work and can be annoying, especially on a three star skill. And then the attack down can also be annoying if you can't kill her. But I don't really see her being much of a threat because. Thirst lasts for two turns. It's essentially essentially like SP Siphon, but I, I do believe there's like a slight delay with using it. And if... Not if. Um, I do believe Amon can resist it, so that does that part does suck while you can't resist a, uh, SP Siphon. So, definitely a PvP Mon, but at this point, is it worth the Nat 4s to get this one where it needs to be at? Um, we will have to find out. So let's go ahead and move over here to the water one next. We'll find out by the end of this video. Alright, so water Harlequin um, is a balance type coming in with nearly 30k HP, 2.7k attack, and then 2.4k defense. Stat wise is solid. Solid. Almost creeping over there to the 3k for the attack on a balance type and nearly 30k HP. That's pretty darn solid and this one comes in with courageous strike and then attack down and it does come with critical hit damage as the variant skill I did forget to mention that but uh, courageous strike and attack down this is 155 percent a Titans mon and do take note that it says critical hits so if she doesn't have a square slot I'm sorry but if she does have a square slot uh, you are good to go but in terms of Titans her attack could be better but it is okay and actually pretty acceptable especially with the 80% chance uh, for attack down to activate for two turns is pretty solid with without skill books right off the bat um, the only issue I could see with her though is um, if people already have water sea strikers then there's no reason to really build her like, if your water team is good to go, there's no reason to build her. But I would love to build her just to have her replace uh, at least one, if not both, of my water sand wraiths because they just have unflinching strike and it does damage lower. But the higher up you go in Titans, the more doo doo it does. So I would love to have her just to replace those until I could pull something better. But I did pull a. Uh, Water Balrona, another Water Balrona, so I need to get her up as well, but that's really her only downside is just that if you already have a strong water team, then she's not really worth getting, but if you don't have a strong water team, then definitely go for it, definitely go for it. Her stats are there, her skills are there, she's solid. Not amazing, but solid. Alright, and next up is uh, Wood Harlequin, who's a balance type coming in with nearly 31k HP, uh, about 2.4k attack, and then 2.5k defense. Uh, once again, stats are there. Stats are solid, dude. Stats are 100% solid. They're not amazing, but they're solid, so you can definitely work with solid. Oh, that's a weird variant color. Uh, this one comes in with SP Siphon and Petrification. You guys should know by now that I'm honestly not a big fan of petrification. I don't really see a point in it, but I'm sure there's plenty of dudes that run water wild thing, and uh, I, I do count purse as an as an exception. So maybe water wild thing, wa water wild thing, can take that exception as well. But uh, SP siphon 20% for yeah, just 20%. Normally it's 25%. 
for a lot of mods, it's 25%. Maybe they want you to book her up to get 25%. The SP Siphon part is fine. Not a big fan of the petrification, though. So if you could find some type of usage for that, then she could be potentially useful. But honestly, with so many SP Siphoners in the game already, would I recommend you guys sacrificing all kinds of Nat 4s just to get her to Evo 3 to make her usable? No. If you don't have an SP Siphoner at the time of this video, see if you can pull a wood one and just keep her around in the event that you need an sp siphoner but other than that i wouldn't say it's worth the investment the steep investment of all those nat fours just to get her to evo 3 which if you want to use her though it's all up to you i can't i can't prevent you from using her and next up is a uh, light harlequin who's a defender type coming in with nearly 31k hp uh, 2k attack and then 3.1k defense. I mean, 3k defense is pretty solid, but I don't know. It just seems a little bit lackluster. I mean, maybe I'm just crazy, but I feel like it could be a little bit better. It is what it is, though. Uh, she comes with damage reduction, 50% for one turn, and then fearless taunt. So this is, once again, a PvP-orientated mon. Obviously more of a defender mon. Well, PvP defense versus PvP attack because of the damage reduction, which I think it's similar to... Is it similar to, um... What's his name? Silver? Damage reduction and fearless taunt. Let's look real quick. Where's Silver? He has SP siphon and damage reduction. 30% SP siphon too. Good gosh. Um... This one... The damage reduction could be useful as well as as well as the fearless taunt. It's just a matter of just making her tanky enough to be efficient. Um, in terms of her usage, once again, once again, it's more defensive base than anything. And I'm sure with a good build on her and get, with some decent resists, she could pose a threat at this point in time. But I don't feel comfortable recommending you guys exactly how good she will be at because I'm not a big PvP expert. So to all the boys out there that know what's up, feel free to leave a comment below and uh, let us know if you guys think she's going to be good or if she's going to be a, a no for me dog. Please let us know because I don't want to comment on something I don't know or completely understand because that's it's not professional. We're trying to keep it professional over here. And then last is um, Dark Harlequin who is an attacker type. Thank you. Thank 433 for that. Thank you guys. No more making uh, Dark Mons straight caca, even though I'm sure the next one will be. But anyways, the Dark One is an attacker type coming in with 27k HP, nearly 3.2k attack, and then 2k defense. So um, standard for attack attacker types. 27k HP, good to go. Over 3k attack, good to go. 2k defense, glassy. But we're building crit rate attack attack anyways to take advantage of that damage. Uh, she comes in with elemental edge and then predator. Predator 40%. Um, I think there was a post on Reddit a while ago about predator versus hunter. Hunter would be better. Hunter 100% would be better. But she does have books. She does need crit for her elemental edge to work. Now you might be asking Elio is she worth all of the nat fours to sacrifice to get her to evo 3 to make her viable and my answer to that is no no elemental edge is great her elemental edge is great but if you have a mon like dark seedler you don't really need it elemental edge is very useful in many situations maybe if you wanted to use her in pvp and attack rgb mons with elemental edge and her having um the benefit from crit damage i could see this being useful but why not just run a mon that has hunter on their three star skill or why not just run a mon that has morale boost and elemental edge on their five star skill instead you know what i mean like it's just easily counterable it's not really worth it because she doesn't get any benefit from fighting light mons either so keep that in mind there's no elemental benefit from elemental edge elemental edge is just useless at that point in time so not a bad mon for those that don't have anything with elemental edge on it but not the greatest in my opinion either and i could be wrong but other than astrogod purposes i don't really see much of a use for her 
especially at least for where I'm at in the game, you guys might need her. You guys might say, hey, dude, she's cool AF, so I'm just going to use her anyways. And you know what? I don't hate you for that. I do not hate you for that. So, I mean, really, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Fire. Not really. Water, if you need it. Um, grass, I don't really recommend either. Lights, my boys, I need your input input on the light one and the dark one if you can pull it pull it but is it worth all the nat fours to get it to evo 3 in my opinion no but if you like it you like it and there's nothing wrong with that because at the end of the day this is the, this is all the game this is all the game and this is all professional but unlicensed advice my boys but that's it for a harlequin review my boys thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video